So, E3 just announced their new Himera toolhead. Naturally, I've been using it for a few weeks. My first impressions are that it's quite a beast of an extruder. And yes, it's now called the Himera. Apparently, some international company was concerned about the Hermes brand and kindly asked E3D to change the name. So, it's now the E3D Himera. Other than the name, it's the exact same toolhead. It's still got dual drive gears, a roughly 3 to 1 gearing ratio, and a semi integrated V6 hot end. This is basically, you know, what their Titan Aero should always have been. It's also very affordable at 90 British pounds, so just over 100 euros for the extruder with a full V6 hot set and the stepper motor included. If you're thinking about getting a genuine V6 hot end, really just get the whole Himera kit. They've also changed how the extruder is mounted versus the arrow. So, uh, you know, it's flat on both sides, there's nothing sticking out, and that does make it pretty convenient and very universal to mount. I've already put it on a Raptor 2.0 with the Super Volcano because the stock hot end and extruder were absolutely useless on that machine, and I've also put it on the ANET A8 because E3D reached out and wanted to sponsor a conversion guide for that. So, that's what we're going to do today. The A8 is getting the Himera upgrade, and while we added the printed upgrade parts I've designed, we'll also be fixing the crooked belt path, add strain relief to the extruder wiring, and because we're adjusting the firmware anyways, let's just upgrade that to Marlin 2.0 with all the safety features in place. The upgrade parts also retain compatibility with the original part cooling fan shroud, you know, this one if you want to use that, and most of the ones that you can download as upgrade parts for the stock A8, and it should also allow you to keep using the bed leveling sensors that mount to the back of the carriage. This video is sponsored by E3D, let's get to it. For this upgrade, you'll need an ANET A8, a Hemera kit, four M3x5 or M3x6 screws, and either a soldering iron or a spare three pin two point connector housing. You also need a Phillips 2 screwdriver, a 7mm, 10mm, and 16mm spanner, and a few hex keys. First, let's disassemble the original tool head. Undo the locking nut on the original heat brake and remove the screw at the bottom that's holding the extruder body in place. Unplug the motor, we'll be reusing the original motor cable. Also remove the part cooling fan, but we will be reusing that too. If you have any bed leveling sensor mounted to the back of the carriage, unscrew that before unbolting the carriage from the bearing blocks. Once that's loose, clip off the zip ties holding the belt in place and you should be free to remove the stock carriage from the printer. To prepare the Humera mounting kit, all you need to do is to break the little support rings loose from the new carriage. All the other parts should be ready to use straight off the printer. For the Humera itself, rotate the heater block 90 degrees with the long side facing the stepper motor. We need this to maintain compatibility with fan shrouds made for the A8. To rotate it, grab the heater block with a wrench and slightly unscrew the heat brake from the extruder body. Then unscrew the nozzle half a turn, making sure you don't put any bending stresses on the heat brake. Then rotate the block and tighten up the nozzle against the heat brake by holding onto the heater block and screwing down the nozzle. And finally, lightly tighten the heat brake back into the extruder body. Now we're ready to start mounting the Himera to the printer. Start with a new printed carriage and bolt it down onto the bearing blocks using the original screws. Lightly threading each screw first, then tighten all of them down. Next, we can mount the Himera itself to the carriage. Grab the included M3x8 screws and insert two of the square nuts into the slots of the Himera's end plate. Then screw the Himera to the carriage from the back. If you're having trouble with the square nuts falling out, you can easily put a piece of tape over the slot. I had to do that too. Next, mount the fan adapter plate onto the front side of the Himera. Use two more square nuts and the shorter M3x5 screws. Then use the original fan screws and mount the fan to the adapter plate. You may need to push a bit to get the thread started. Lastly, let's mount the strain relief wire guide. This can attach to any of the grid points above the extruder if your wiring is different, but I found it to work well all the way to the right. Use two M3x10 screws or any other screw that fits and bolt it down. By the way, there's also a few extra grid points on the bottom edge of the carriage plate if you feel like mounting stuff there. And that's the carriage assembled. Let's get it working. For motion, we need to attach the belt. This is a screwless mount. Simply slide the belt in on one side, then grab a pair of needle nose pliers and slide in the other side under slight tension. Next up, wiring. We're reusing the original motor connector and part cooling fan, so they can stay wired in. The hot end heater can use the same terminal on the board as the stock one. The Himera comes with ferrules around its wires, which makes this a really clean install. The hot end cooling fan is fairly simple too. 
Carefully pull off the white connector shroud from the board, then plug the connector on the Himera fan into the pins, making sure you get the polarity right by matching the red and black wires to the orientation of the part cooling fans wires. The thermistor, you have a few different options. If you have a 3-pin housing for these DuPont style connectors, you can remove the wires from the supplied 2-pin housing by bending up these tabs and insert them into the outermost spots in the 3-pin one. Then peel off the connector shroud on the board and plug it in. Polarity does not matter here. Alternatively, you can also cut the connector off and solder on the stock thermistor's connector. Now to get the wires in order, pull two zip ties through the strain relief guide and tie down the wire bundle from the hot end after you've wrapped it with a spiral wrap. At this point you could start up the printer and start cranking out parts, but it would severely under extrude and the temperatures would be off. So because the A8 could do with a few extra firmware fixes anyways, I'm providing a fresh setup of Marlin 2.0 beta that not only is ready for the Himera NV6 hot end, but it also enables all the thermal safety features. You can compile and upload the firmware yourself, and you can make any changes you'd like, like enabling auto-leveling, etc. But the easiest way to get going is to flash the provided.hex file. Some A8 printers have a bootloader, which means you can flash it with the built-in tools in the old Cura, or I think Prusa Slicer 2. Mine didn't have a bootloader, so I flashed it with an Arduino as ISP. There's already plenty of guides for that out there, so I'm not going to go into detail here. For slicing settings, as always, any default profile, for example in Prusa Slicer, should work. You should be able to slightly reduce the retread length, this one is completely string free, and your extruder is not going to be the limiting factor for flow rates anymore. While the firmware does account for the slightly changed XY nozzle position, you should still adjust the Z-axis end stop and level the bed before you get printing though. And that's it! Check the links in the description below for the official shops carrying genuine Himera extruders and for links to the mounting parts and the new firmware. If this video was too fast for you, you can also find the text version of this guide on E3D's wiki. And I've got one last favor to ask. I see that over two thirds of you who are watching this content aren't subscribed. So if you're enjoying this stuff, and apparently you do because you've watched this video all the way to the end, maybe just click that subscribe button and YouTube is now giving you pretty good control over what notifications you want to get for a channel with that bell menu. None, algorithm recommended, or just straight up all of them. Just pick the one that suits you best. Obviously all, right? <laughs> so if, if you want to keep going with upgrading the aid, the internet has guides for replacing the electronics, the frame, the linear rails, belts, display, power supply, wiring, you know, every part of the printer. But first of all, make sure the wiring, especially for the heated bed, is safe and won't break over time. But that's it for this one. Thanks again to E3D for sponsoring this guide. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!